Hey everybody, it's Miranda here from the Cirilla Dews Education Design Team and today I'm going to be working with the November Technique Kit which is the Yummy Gelatos along with all the other goodies that come in the kit but I'm going to also be using a little box that I had in my stash and some Elmer's glue. This is super cheap y'all. I mean you can get this at any store. It's just amazingly cheap and what we're going to do with this is I'm going to teach you how to do a crackle paint technique using this and your gelatos and then you'll also need one other color of paint for your top coat. This is just some that I had in my stash. So you can see here what we're going to do is make a really like three-toned effect in the background and we're going to do the crackle paint on top of it. And I did prep my box with some gesso. You guys don't have to use a box. This technique can be applied to anything, whether it's tags, paper, whatever you want to do. So it just adds some gesso just as kind of like a base for your gelatos to stick to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water bottle I'm just going to kind of wet the side of it before I start using my gelatos. And the colors that I have chosen to use are the black-white, which are my favorite color combo ever. I love, love, love this. And then I just chose the light blue as well. Um, the more colors you use, the cooler it will be. But I have something set in my head that I want to do with this box. So these are the ones that I'm going to use. So just spritz the side, whatever you want to do the crackling on. Just go ahead and spritz it with some of the water. And go in with your gelatos and just random areas. Just color them in. Okay. And I'm going to add some white as well. And again, you don't have to worry about going on top of the blue with the white because it wipes right off of your gelato. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start blending it in at this point. Okay, I'm going to also wipe off my fingers and go in with a little bit more white so I can get some more color variation. Okay, and now I'm going to take my black gelato and I'm just going to go in in random areas to kind of give it that darker grungy feel that I love so much. Just blend that in. It almost turns like gray when it hits the white, so it's kind of like a four-toned effect too. Okay, y'all, so that is pretty much it. You can blend a more or less, whatever you want to do. I'm going to kind of take away a little bit of the black. Okay, and I'm happy with that. That'll give me lots of color showing through. And the last step I'm going to do before I let this dry for a little while, before I put the glue on top, is I'm just going to use the smooch spritz that comes in your kit this month. And I'm just going to give it a good spray from a distance just to kind of get that sparkle on there. And it kind of helps those to blend a little bit better. Okay, so that is it, y'all. I'm going to let that dry for a couple of minutes, and then I'll show you how to do the crackling. And now all we're going to do is take the Elmer's glue. Now you guys, if you have some crackle mediums, you're more than welcome to use them. But I have seriously found that the glue works just as good, if not better. And the cracks that I achieve are much bigger than any crackle mediums. And not to mention the amount of money you'll save. So you can see right there, I just did one color on the bottom to test it out. But this is a really, you know, good way to save some money. And the crackles turn out much better, in my opinion. And it's easier to use, so... Just put a little bit on there and the key to this I have found is not to have too much like that's way too much um, but what we're going to do is after we get it blended up across the whole thing you can kind of go in and take off as much as you need to so I'm just going to go ahead and spread that around what you're going to want to get it to is kind of like a, um, a glaze a thick glaze of the glue not too gloppy or anything okay so you can see there that is way too much so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking my finger and just swiping across and taking that excess off and I'm just gonna wipe that on a paper towel okay that's about the thickness you want right there just make sure you don't have any globs anywhere it's pretty much perfect right there and what I do is you want to apply your top layer of paint while this glue is still tacky um, not when it's completely dry so I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my paint on a little scrap piece of paper 
and get my paintbrush ready. And then I'm going to heat set it just a tea tiny amount just to get this glue to where it's really tacky and not um, so wet. Okay, and then I'll try to show you what I'm talking about. You can touch it with your finger and it wants to stick to it. So that is what we're going for right there. So at this point, just take your paint, whichever color you choose, and your paintbrush. And the trick is trying not to go over the spot too many times. So you kind of want to get a lot on your brush and just kind of go over the area one time. Two, three, way more than I should have right there. But um, the thing with the glue is you actually have a little bit more play time than you do with the crackle medium. I think that's why I like it so much. So just try to get an even coat on there without going over it too many times. Sorry, y'all. I know the lighting, the window is like making a glare on this. I do apologize, y'all. But that is pretty much it, you guys. And I'll try to let it sit for a second so you can start seeing when the crackles start to form. Um, you'll let this dry completely. Don't heat set it because it affects the crackles. They don't come out as defined. So the best thing to do is just have some patience and let it sit to the side, you know, for an hour or two until it's completely dry. And hopefully we can sit here for a second until we see a few crackles forming. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but you can kind of see right there the crackles are starting to form. And then I'll come back in just a few minutes when they're really starting to set in and show you the effect that it starts to have. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes and the crackles are starting to form. So it's kind of a slow process, but you just need to kind of, the best thing I do is just do it overnight, do the crackling right before I go to bed, and then when I wake up tomorrow, it is ready to work on. So just don't heat set it, whatever you do, and as you let it sit, the crackles will get bigger and bigger. Okay, and the next step I'm going to show you guys is how to create your own glimmer mist using the gelatos. I am all about the mist, y'all. So I was just playing around and was thinking maybe I could, um, I was going to paint it on first and I realized we got these spray bottles in our last month's kit. So I was going to see if I could make it into a glimmer mist form. So what I've done is I've just taken a little spray mister from last month's kit. Use any spray bottle you have and you're just going to need some water. And if you wanted to have the mica powder in it, like a real shimmer mist, you're going to need something last month's kit had primary elements in it that's amazing works great it's perfect I'm going to use perfect pearls um, by Ranger just because it's the color I want I want like a pearlescent color so what you're going to do is just get some sort of bowl or container whatever you want to use and you're just going to get your black gelato or whatever color you want to use to make glimmer mist out of and just start scraping it onto the bottom of your bowl um, however much you scrape that's the color you're going to get. The darker you want it, the more you're going to put. So what I'm going to do now, as you can see it's in there, is I'm just going to start spraying until that runs all the way down. I just want about three squirts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paintbrush and just kind of swirl this all together. Get it all mixed up. And I've already got some in my bottle. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest of that right in my little spray bottle. And I will probably spill this y'all because I'm infamous for not being able to pour anything into a container. But we're going to try. And like I said, I spilled it. But I got most of it in there. Okay. So you can see that it's in there. Let me clean up my mess really quickly. And now what you're going to do is just take the mica powder of your choice. Again, I'm using Perfect Pearls. And you're just going to scoop a little bit into your bottle. Let me grab something to scoop this with really quickly. I'm just going to use my craft knife and I'm just going to scoop into the bottle. Put as much as you want, however much shimmer you want. That's how much pigment powder you're going to want to put in there. I like a lot of shimmer. Okay, so that is pretty much it. You guys, a reminder, if you're using the primary elements from last month's kit, you do need a binder for it, gum arabic. So what you'll do now is just shake it up. And you have got your own homemade glimmer mist. So all those colors of gelatos you have, you can make a glimmer mist out of all of them. And it didn't take hardly anything, you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just on this paper towel really quickly what it looks like. So you can see right there. And hopefully that shimmer will come across on the camera. Really, really pretty and really dark too. So again, if you want it lighter, just do less 
black. Now I'm going to go into a time lapse video now and I'm just going to explain as I, what I'm doing as I go, but the rest of this is going to be sped up. So if you have any questions after the video, just let me know. Okay, the first thing I'm doing here is taking some music note paper from my stash and I'm just tearing it into strips and putting the black gelato on the edges, kind of like a distressing ink and just blending it in with my fingers. And then you get the burlap in the kit this month and I put some modeling paste on it to kind of make it a little more stiff so that way I could cut a shape out of it and it wouldn't just all fray and fall apart. And I'm cutting a heart shape out of the burlap. And I'm just using my Aileen's Tacky Glue. It dries clear. It's one of my favorite adhesives. Um, if I'm not using hot glue, I'm always using this to adhere like papers and everything down. And I'm just adhering them randomly on there in different places. And this little balsa box comes with a little string attached to a button to keep the box closed. So I'm just re-punching those holes that were already there and I'm running some seam binding through it because I'm going to change the way it closes. I'm going to use a Tim Holtz bingo piece that I have painted black to get rid of the red and I'm just going to tear that down with E6000 and that's going to be my little button to keep the box closed. got a little piece of graphic 45 paper here that has a little saying on it and I'm just distressing the edges of that up because I wanted to incorporate that into my box somehow and I usually ruffle things up to kind of give it a more distressed look instead of just a flat piece of paper and there's the bow that I've tied and I'm getting some Webster's Pages trim out from my stash and I'm just going to adhere it along the left side of it I love this rosette trim And I'm just using hot glue to adhere this down. For any laces or anything lightweight, I'm usually going with hot glue. And now I'm taking a Prima mask from my stash and I'm just placing it on here and I'm going to use that homemade glimmer mist that we made and I'm just going to spray on top of that. And you can see the masking here. It's really, really pretty. That gelato makes a great glimmer mist. And here I've sprayed my little sentiment with some water and I'm just going over it with the white gelato to kind of whitewash it and tone it down. And then also if you wet paper, you can mold it to a certain form and then when you heat set it, it will keep that form. So I'm just kind of ruffling it up and then heat setting it so it will stay that way. I'm just going to place it in the left corner of my box, again using hot glue. And I'm just going to put a little baby dot of glue on that heart because I don't want it to seep out of the burlap. I'm taking the smooch spritz and I'm going to spritz all of my flowers that go on here so they're nice and shimmery. And these are the petaloo flowers that come in the kit this month. And here I've got a little chipboard key and I'm just going over it with the black gelato and then spraying it with the smooch spritz and blending it in.
and I'm just adhering my flowers down. And I'm just finding a place to put the key, I'm trying to figure out which way I want it to sit. And I'm always changing my mind on things. That's the beauty of hot glue too, is it can come, anything you lay down, you can take right back off with hot glue. And if you have to heat set it to warm the glue back up, you can do that as well. And here I'm just adding a little bit of bling from my stash, just little leftover scrap pieces. And I'm just tucking them coming out of the flowers. Okay, and here I've got some light bulbs in the kit this month that they come in the add-on. These are just from my stash though, and although I'm adhering them with hot glue right now, I did go back in and use E6000, but for the sake of this video, I just did the hot glue temporarily so you guys could see. I like using any random thing, you know, off-the-wall things for the feet on my boxes, so I thought the light bulbs would look really cute on there. So I hope you guys like my box and I hope you like the process video. If you have any questions on anything that I've done, just put a comment down below and I will respond to you and have a great day.